and we're going to get straight into the topic. So some key aspects for improving your stiff arm is being able to have good trunk as well as shoulder control and you're strong through your elbow. So we want to make sure we're training straight arm strength in the gym. So things like holding the top of a dip can be some straight arm strength, holding a plank for those that aren't strong enough to hold the top of a dip. If you want to progress the dip, use ring dips uh, and then doing some single arm holds like single arm plank holds. That's really, really important. And you want to make sure you're pushing through the ground or pushing through the object as hard as you can with a stiff and straight elbow. Don't let a micro bend collapse in. And then from the bent arm strength, which is typically most of our exercises from a tr traditional strength and power point of view, you've got the bench press, which is what we should be doing 10 months of the year, uh, as that's a really specific movement pattern to the fend off. And I'll go through some different variations from changing your bench height, changing your grip, changing your um, uh, stimulus in terms of bands, chains, all the different things that we can do to continually progressively overload the body, but also improve not only your max strength, but your speed strength and power as well. Typically, most strength and conditioning programs from a, for footballers will have you benching once a week, whether that be incline bench, shoulder press, flat bench, decline bench, close grip, bench press, floor press, concentric benches, whatever it is, you're doing one form of bench pressing a week. In terms of accessory lifts, some of my favorites, as I mentioned before, is the incline bench press, the decline bench press, dips, weighted push-ups, banded bench press to improve that explosive power, which for some of you that you've only ever done heavy lifting, it could be the reason that the new stimulus that you need to break your plateau and hit a new PB in six to eight weeks time is adding speed bench in. So Smith machine throws, banded bench press, and, uh, and chain. So we get using what's known as accommodating resistance where the weight is at the lightest where you're weakest and it's at the heaviest where you're strongest. So it's good for generating power because you get more momentum behind the bar. Really good for developing your explosive strength. Um, so do some sort of like med ball throws if you haven't done that type of training before and then progress to Smith machine throws and then go to a block of banded bench press and then retest your bench and see if you you're able to be able to drive out of the hole a little bit quicker. In terms of the power tip for this week, it's all about plyometrics and neuroactivation. We, I just caught up with Vince Kelly, who he's supervising a couple of um, PhD students that are doing their work on resistance priming training. So for those new to that, it's essentially doing some, like it could just be warming up to two sets at 85% of your max. So if you, if you can box squat 100 kilos, you got 85 kilos in the bar and you complete two to four reps at it. And that's just to get a good stimulus through the, um, your recruiting your motor units as well as a neural charge. So to be able to um, switch your body on before you perform a high intensity activity like jumping, for example, or if you want to improve your acceleration and your top end speed, you might do some resisted sprints. And all, the, all we're doing, we're not trying to do it to necessarily get a strength stimulus. We're doing it purely to help your performance on the upcoming game or main training session. For what I wish I knew 10 years ago, I wish I valued networking. It's something I really started to bring in over the last couple of years just through the podcast. I, and it's having a profound effect in terms of how much I'm learning and being able to absorb information, apply it, and really have a good filter in terms of what's practical, what's relevant, and what's not. So I wish I valued networking 10 years ago. If that's something that you're not putting time and energy into meeting and talking with those in the industry, I highly recommend you give it a go.